Wiggles, don't you start. Hello. Uh, Later, the, the councilman, all these other things. Like I went like kind of ham, like really crazy. So. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Loving that. Good to see you. You too. So I'm so glad you know. Do you know anybody else in this room? Um, Stephanie and my husband, who was just signed in. <laughs> Ray's here. Oh, and Ray had his birthday yesterday. How fun he was did. that? did. That's right. Do you feel any older, Ray? <laughs> He's still connecting to audio, it says. Oh, well, hurry up. Otherwise, there's no point in the question. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't look any older. He, I mean, like I said before, you guys, you will look like you're 30 until you're dead. And this can like turn into like a decomposing crib. Oh my God, there's the... You know, it's the, it's the wonderful Asian curse. It's a blessing. Yes. Because, you know, you use such amazing skincare. It's a curse. It's a blessing and a curse, you know, two sex. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you've seen this. Go live anyway. It's okay. so politically incorrect on so, on so many levels some days. I love that. It's I was going to do a poll on Facebook. That's exactly what you, how you were describing it, though, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just a visual representation of how you've spoken about it. <laughs> oh dear God, I feel like I am a bad human being when you say it like that. Okay, so, um, all right, so everybody's coming in. I'm loving this. Everybody started. Fabulous. We're going to see what happens. Guys, while you're here, can you do me a favor? I'm still experimenting with how to get this working and getting more people involved. So if you go to Facebook real quick on my live and hit the like button, apparently that moves this up in their algorithm. Again, things we're learning. So when you guys do these things, you can also benefit. So, um, and I'll do it for you. But that will at least get it moving a little bit more. I certainly hope. But we're going to go ahead and get started because I have my dear gorgeous friend from Vancouver, <laughs> Canada, Mr. Tim Tsai. How are you? Hello. Honey? Yeah? Let me go ahead and give you guys a brief history of Tim. Tim is, I uh, started investing in like 1919. And, um, <laughs> He has been, he made a deal with the devil to stay alive forever and to help him get his real estate empire growing. It only cost him his health and everything else that went with it. We'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, anyway, he is an amazing soul, an amazing person. He's going to tell you the truth of it all. But Tim has overcome so many obstacles to get to where he is. And the only reason why he has that, uh, what, the, what he credits that strength to is because he realizes how fragile and precious life is so he learned very early on in his life to get out of his own way tim thank you for joining us and being thanks. here today and sharing your knowledge with us thanks for having me why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about when you started investing what type of, of investing you do um what you or you know, i'll let you start with that okay well um you know what actually i'm just wondering how many how many people in this room at the moment uh, know what legacy is, was? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, cool. A lot, a lot. Of getting something. So I think, you know, that means we actually share the same roots in a way, because that's exactly where I was about 10 years ago. And back then they were still affiliated with this great book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. And um, that's actually how I got started. Everybody's got a purple library, I'm, I'm assuming here. So, I mean, how I got, how I got started, oh my God. Um, mm -hmm. This was 2010, so I, pretty much just a decade ago now at this point. And got started because, well, you know what? A lot of people, they tend to think that health is, uh, is one of the main drivers. And I'm gonna tell you, that's what I've learned over time. As a young buck back then, you always tend to think that you're gonna live forever and you're invincible and there's just an infinite amount of time for you to reach the goals that you've set out for yourselves. And I should have I should have known better because I had my very first heart attack when I was 18 years old and then I had a second one when I was 19 and then I had a heart surgery when I was 20. I just remember that the day I was getting wheeled into the surgery room, I kind of made a small promise to myself that if I come out of that, and I was a bad boy, by the way, I didn't tell anybody I was going in for a surgery. I drove myself to the hospital and paid oh my, my day God. parking, okay. thinking I was going to get out of the hospital later that day. 
that's how naive I was. Okay. And so you wait, that you day when I walked, out, when I got wheeled in, I remember telling myself, you know what, when I come out of this, I'm going to live my life differently. And of course I didn't do that because at 20 years old, even though you have those warts in your head, you have no idea when, where, how you're going to live your life differently, so to speak. And like a good Asian kid, after I recovered from my heart, sur heart surgery, I went back to school, jumped right back in, traditional education, right? Because that's what my parents wanted from me. And so got in, uh, got back into school, finished my double major and my and a minor, and I did a bunch of co-op terms. So if you're from the US, they're internships. <laughs> we just call them co-op for some reason. And so just did, did all those things and started my career. And it was, I was fortunate enough that, you know, a lot of good values, I think like most of us in this room, because you wouldn't be here if you don't have very strong work ethics and if you don't work hard and if you don't value learning and growth. At least that's what I think, right? Those are the kind of people that Jacob liked to invite onto these things. And um, yeah, so I got, into, I got into marketing, which was my passion. That's what I went to school for. However, marketing was not paying the bills. And so ended up just kind of through a bit of a, it was a bit of a bumpy beginning. And then I eventually landing, uh, I landed in sales. By the way, English is not my first language and you can tell I'm, I'm just kind of easing into the energy at the moment and my accent tends to come out. <laughs> my first language is Mandarin too. So if you speak Mandarin or want to learn Mandarin, I'm your guy. And so I got, I got into sales. That's where I actually eventually landed. Had a lot of internal battle with being in that profession for a while too. Um, however, I look back now and I realized that a lot of my building, business building skills really came from those days of being in the sales industry and did fairly well and climbed pretty fast in the corporate ladder. So what that really means is that- No. <laughs> no. What? What? What do you mean no? Oh, you heard that. <laughs> that was past life. Past life. <laughs> past life. Back in the day. I apologize. My kids were knocking at the door. Can I just ask you parents in the room who are here? Can I just ask you, how, how do you do it? Like, what is going on? What, where does this actually... What, how did you make it to five o'clock before you started drinking? That's all I really want to know for anybody else out there. But now going back to Tim, one second. Anyway. I think, you're, I think so, your question's answered. Because I see Pam in the car by herself and Mike sitting on the patio somewhere, it looks like without interruptions of kids. So <laughs> I think we're pretty good. <laughs> Stephanie looks like she's probably by herself. <laughs> so... um. So yes, yeah, so my question for you, Tim, was you said you, yeah. had, you have had how many heart attacks now? Three minor. Three minor heart attacks. 2011 was the last 18, one. 18, 21 was your last one? Yes. So that obviously, had, that has, so my, um, one of the reasons why I definitely relate to Tim is when I, before I started learning to invest, I just got my real estate license and my uh, partner at the time had a heart attack at the age of 39. And you don't go through that without having some very uh, intense conversations with yourself, um, coming to terms with what it means to really be alive and, and who you really are and what your identity is. I wasn't the one that had a heart attack, but I would have been the survivor. Had my partner passed on, he wouldn't have cared. He wouldn't have known, he wouldn't have been here. But for being the survivor, it was terrifying. How now witnessing what Jason went through, there was almost a level of denial uh, that I, frankly, he still is dealing with. What do you think that your motivation to build something more from your life was based on a place of denial or acceptance because of what you had to go through with your health issues? That's, that's a question I've never really thought about, actually. Um, well, I, sure. I know, you're putting them on a spot now. That's cool, I like it. I, I like being challenged. Uh, you know what, I think it's actually acceptance. Because okay. I've had a few conversations with a few other people since, and uh, you know what, I actually call a lot of these, th uh, 
my health challenges. Because in addition to the heart attacks, I also have five autoimmune disorders that I live with. Um, and I have to inject myself with medications on a monthly basis. Used to be every other week, I'm better now. Um, however, you know, I've had chats with other people and I feel like it's a blessing because I was also very spoiled. And I think having all these health challenges made me really, like you said, turned inwards to have those conversations that probably not a lot of people like to have with themselves. Okay. And um, it, it really got me to realize, as cheesy as it sounds, what I feel like what my purpose really should be on this planet. And, however amount of time I have. So what did you, what do you, what do you think your purpose on this planet is since you've had those conversations with yourself? Are you determined to make me cry? And this, it's, it's what uh, everybody, people always say that, you know, if your why doesn't make you cry, it's not big enough. And, and I really just, I really just want to leave this, the, the people that have come into my life's lives better. Um, you know, it's like when people say you want to leave the world a better place, that kind of idea. And, and I think that's probably why, you know, years ago when people, when, when I was, when I was asked to come back and join the elite family, I was so happy that it, it felt like there was now a platform and a stage for me to be able to do something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think, and through it all, I think I do do everything that I can to, to lead or live by example in a way. Cause um, I know, and I, to me, that's one of the biggest compliments and I love it because, you know, when people comment about the fact that I actually look healthy, when I tell people my health history and what I currently battle with, nobody can tell and i and i really just hope that through that it generates a bit of an inspiration for anybody so you definitely have made an impact you have such a wonderful energy about you and you're incredibly genuine in fact that's one thing both of your mentees that were inducted into the hall of fame last year said about you they just thought you were incredibly nurturing and so supportive so thank you for being a light to our community thank you um, not everyone here is from elite but they know of what it is and what we do want to stress is the importance of a financial education um, i find that a financial education is really a moral obligation that we have as human beings to be accountable to our own futures and not rely on quote unquote luck. What does a financial education mean to someone like you? Financial, financial education ended up meaning freedom and the power to influence, the ability to influence, the ability to give back, the ability to guide people to create the kind of future that they really deserve and want for themselves. One of the people that I, uh, that I follow a lot still and may he rest in peace, is Jim Rohn. Yes. I don't know if everybody in this room is familiar with his work and what he stood for. Amazing. And one of the things he always says that, hey, you know what? Society does not require you to build a solid financial security around you or your family. You got to want to do that for yourselves. And so again, financial education, the way I see it is I got to provide it. You don't have to take it because I can tell you what to do with your life. However, if you want it, we're going to make it available and we're going to make it accessible to, to as many people as possible. Cause I remember when I first enrolled into the ILLY program 10 years ago as a young person, if I had to get into debt to do it. However, that's how much I truly, truly believe in the fact that this was going to make a world of difference for the rest of my life. And yeah. Oh, I, 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 can, I think all of us can relate to that. If you can relate to getting into debt to become more financially intelligent, give it a thumbs up on Facebook. <laughs> can we do it here? I don't even know. Raise your hand, whatever you do here in Zoom. So, yeah, right? We're all like, yeah, that's it. Um, so, and it, it's scary. It's terrifying. And that's one reason why I want to do this here, because it's so hard for people to get past that action. There's almost the shame that you have when you invest in yourself. You mm -hmm. either feel selfish because you took 
you took uh, money that you either had or did not have, whichever it is, you, you feel like you were greedy and you spent it on yourself. So you feel shame for investing in your best asset, which is you, um, or you feel numb. I find that a lot too. People just, they, they don't want to acknowledge that they actually did that action because if they actually acknowledge what they did, then they'd have to do something about it. Yeah. So what I want this, these calls to grow to be is people to be proud that they have invested that money in their education. If it were with a traditional college, they would not be ashamed. They'd almost wear the amount of money that they spent for their degree, like a badge of honor. I'm at $100,000 worth of debt and I'm a chiropractor. Like they would wear it with pride, but that didn't give them any security. Meanwhile, when people go for alternative forms of education, they're almost ashamed because it's not what the mainstream looks at. So yeah. you recently started your, you branched out. Um, you now have started your own education company. How is that going? It's, you know what? It's, it, all things considered, I think we're doing really well because I'm, I'm super pumped about the people that we, we have actually invited to join us on this journey. Because the way I always say it is that, well, the mission is the same. The vehicles just got changed. Because mm -hmm. the mission has always been to really help people create the financial independence that they're looking for. And to create that solid financial backing. And the way we really look at it is honestly though, it's really ultimately about multiple streams of income. Some people, I mean, I've, I've mentored, I don't know how many people now over the years, and uh, I can, I, I actually, I'm very geeky. I have a spreadsheet to keep track of all my students and, and my, uh, especially my mentees. I can tell you 85% of my students are actively doing deals, and I can tell you that 40% of my students are financially free, and some, a lot of people are somewhere in between by choice, because we get people that come in at all different Back, from all different backgrounds, all different ages. Not everybody wants the exact same thing. And so to me, you know, even though me personally, I was sold on the idea of financial freedom and I achieved it, I achieved it. And really now it's really about just helping people achieve that understanding and that empowerment that, hey, I come in, got the knowledge and the skills, they can do whatever they want with it. Because I got people that come in that are in their 50s. They're like, hey, you know what? I don't care to fire my boss at this point because I'm cruising at my job. I get paid really well and I'm about to retire in a few years. It's easy. I just want to, you know, build a better lifestyle or solidify my legacy with my kids or build a better retirement so I don't have to live like a bum after I, <laughs> after I retire. So what, how do you want to retire? Sorry? How do you want to retire? Like, what do you see? Well, first of all, what, because you are financially free at this point, what does retirement look like for someone like you? Um, well, you know what? Retirement happened in 2012 because it took, it took us about 25 months to achieve financial freedom ourselves. 25 and months. So two years and one month of hustling. 25 months. You got into debt to do it. How much debt did you get into that you had to crawl out of? Uh, well, 10 years ago, it was literally just the tuition that I had to pay for it. Mm -hmm. However, again, looking back, it was the greatest single investment that I've ever made. Cause I think what that really also signified was that we believed in our ability to take it and run with it. And we trusted in ourselves, we trusted in what we were doing. That's, that's where people fail. They fail, they fail to believe in themselves and that's really the biggest stumbling block. Yeah. So you have to so, trust your community. So, what it, so you had to replace how much income to become financially free. Well, and this is also why for now, we, right now, I mean, the way we teach now is we're very methodical and we're, the, the formula is there because we really want to build that process that people can truly follow one step at a time because the grand scheme of financial freedom sounds great. And I think a lot of us, we all know that it means that you've got enough passive income to come in to cover your basic expenses. That's usually step one. And for a lot of people, they're looking for step two, which is usually job replacement. And this is why it's hard for most people to walk away from regular JOBs because, well, your jobs pay you just enough that you can pay your basic bills. However, you have a bit of a lifestyle going, going on, right? You get yes. you can go out, hang out with friends, go party, go travel once in a while, take your family out, 
that sort of thing. And that's what makes it hard. And so usually that's when I coach people, that's usually the second step and that's the second goal. And we always say it one step at a time. And I don't know how PC your session is, knowing you not, probably not. not PC. So my channel. step three, I usually say the last goal for financial freedom is F you money. Or again, in a better way to say it is do whatever you want, however you want, whenever you want. Right? So we, we list it out and we walk people through exactly what it means. Because sometimes definitions do matter because you can't hit a target that you can't see. And that's what it comes down to when it comes to financial education. Everything else we can joke about, right? <laughs> it's life. Can't take things too seriously. However, when it comes to money, I'm very serious about it. So and, what, is the, what is it about, um, what, were, what was the biggest surprise for you as you, were, as you were going through the journey? What was the biggest change that you had to make in you to get the goals that you wanted to achieve? Uh, a couple of things, never stop learning and continue to surround yourself with people that are on the same journey. I love that. So, you know, when people say your network is your net worth, I'm going to debate that a little bit because if you're still hanging out with the wrong people, it ain't going to work out either. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, I, I, I think you, what you're doing is amazing to group people together, especially during this time. Well, we, we had an amazing group uh, with, with the education company, and I just, I wanted to protect that. I want that to still thrive. And now that we can actually all be together and, and work together and support each other, that's, I think that's why this is, I look forward to this every, every time when we have them, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and having people like you come and share has been awesome. Um, which is gonna be really exciting when I tell you guys what we're gonna be planning on next at the end <laughs> of the thing. But you stay tuned for that. So I'm gonna be full of great ideas. This, right? I'm having so much fun. Yeah, you are. I'm loving it. So um, <laughs> so we're gonna go there in a second. So uh, so you and Ray, Ray just shine, I just see his face pop up there. Hey, how you doing, birthday boy? You're muted. You gotta unmute did I need to unmute you? Fantastically, thank you so very much. So what is it? So you are the other half of this team, this mm -hmm. power couple, right? <laughs> so please tell us, what are some of Tim's flaws? We all want to know. Well, let's see. Uh, workaholic, definitely. Okay. Well, that's very, pas very passion driven about mm -hmm. everything he does. And uh, well, I think those were to be uh, the big ones. Other than that, he insists on three different types of dishes every meal. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, I asked you for flaws, and you made the most romantic statements. He's very passionate, and he's a worker. Those <laughs> aren't flaws. We're investors. I want to know, does he fart in his sleep? That's what everybody's trying to do. <laughs> okay? Y'all, let's get to the real stuff. You need three dishes for a bowl of ice cream? Dear Lord. All right. <laughs> we, we've been avoiding dairy since the lockdowns because, you know, we're locked inside. So that's not an issue. <laughs> I don't know how you're doing in the cold. I, I'm, I thank God I live in Florida because at least I've got palm trees. It only snows in here in Miami and little dime bags. Everybody else, <laughs> we got palm trees. We're always jealous <laughs> of the pictures you post. I'm Although, jealous. you know what? It is like 80. No, wait, not 80. Almost 80 degrees here today. Oh, that's fine. It'll get down to 80 later. It's okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there we go. No, I, I love that. So, <clears throat> so Ray, did you ever have any doubts when you guys were going through this process and building your company and building your business? What doubts did actually either of you have? Did you guys have any moments where you were really questioning the decisions you were making? Was this a specific deal or, or anything like that? You know, there was, um, there was a point when we were looking at each other ready to sell everything ready to sell um, all the assets and start from scratch because it, it, does, it does get hard at times. And this one, we, you know, we, this was before we really, um, <laughs> we really got into uh, investing in multiple markets and things went sideways. However, Tim and I are both mission driven. And so mm. we know the people who invested in us, well, this uh, expect more. And we didn't do this just for ourselves, especially when we started bringing on JV partners. It, the mission is more than just about us. This isn't necessarily just about money. It was about 
people's retirements, people's education. You were talking about $100,000 uh, worth of education. Well, for some people that have partnered with us, we have their child's education money. We have their children's uh, wedding money or their own wedding money. And so that's what drove us forward despite all the hard times. Um, and when we were almost ready to throw in the towel, we're like, well, this isn't about us. We got to keep on going. The mission is, is more than just about me guys, and him. So I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to wrap that. I, 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 I know your story a little bit. Um, and, and I'm wondering, is this the time where you guys lost uh, tim you were so vulnerable with me before i'm sorry totally gonna spill your laundry out here were yeah that's fine million dollars overnight yeah 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 go for it yeah so so for those of you who are worried about making twenty thousand dollars back or losing ten thousand dollars on a flip these guys lost a million dollars overnight overnight yeah, yeah. It was literally overnight a million and we were in rome italy when that news broke <laughs> yeah and it was out of your control like you didn't that wasn't something you did so can you tell us what that was because I, I think that will shift perspective for a lot of people here well you know we're all trained to do worst case scenario calculations and worst case scenario planning and so we had luckily we had multiple exit strategies however one multiple exit strategy we didn't count on was uh, banks deciding they would start pulling mortgages that they had already pre-approved or were on the process of being approved. So our partner who was, who was doing a more of a short-term loan or continuous loans to force appreciate property suddenly couldn't, well, refi, refinance. And so the money was stuck. And by no means fault of his own, like we, again, we, we looked at all the numbers together and at the time, everything made sense. You know, we had uh, exit A, B, C, and then the rug got pulled for, out from under us. And so, you know, we, we, we take our, our, our licks uh, from that. Uh, and really we looked at each other and the only way to get out of a million dollar hole was to grow even more so that the million dollar hole seems small in comparison. And that's, I think, one of the things we have with real estate education. We have that control within our power to grow beyond that because if we, if we were only running from one playbook with one strategy, yeah, we What are you going to do? We'd be toast. toast. Those rules of play. There were multiple factors that actually made that happen. However, the, the point is during that time, honestly, though, it was very much like, hey, you know what? We know what we know. Selling the asset isn't really a long-term solution because we had to really dig deep and decide whether or not we wanted to stay in this business. And well, I guess everybody knows now we decided that we're going to stay in this business. And what we did was we got into more debt. We acquired more property. We did more <laughs> deals. We expanded in multiple areas. And so when that started to happen, basically with, it took us six years to build up what we had and then to lose a million dollars over. Now, I'm not going to say it was going to put us under. However, it did make us doubt us and our ability to continue on. And we could have, like what Ray was saying, we could have liquidated everything, walk away from it, no problem. Everybody else would get paid. However, we always say that true wealth only comes when you actually start to share the wealth. And that's actually one of the biggest reasons why we were able to build a portfolio that we did was the fact that we started to incorporate JV partners and angel investors and other people's money really, really on. I mean, we were in our 20s. We had no money ourselves. Yeah. And we got into debt to go to do the education. And well, so... And to us, that's how we build everything. And so on top of not wanting to let people down, it was really the fact that, you know what, we, we're passionate about this and we want, like, we want to be able to go out there that later on and tell people, hey, look, you know, you know those stories that you hear when people say that millionaires, when they fail, they can build it back 10 times faster the second time around and the next time around if it happens again, never experienced that until that happened. And so it took us six years to build our very first portfolio. And once we lost the money overnight, it took us less than two years to re not only recover and rebuild everything multiple times over. 
And that was when it really gave us the aha and goes, holy crap, we do know something. And if we actually <laughs> apply what we know. <laughs> you know, it's surprising because it's, you can learn and learn and learn and read and, and theorize and discuss as much as you want. It could be like a, 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 an 1800 Parisian parlor and you just discuss the topics of the day, right? But until you have to actually figure it the fuck out, you don't know what you know. You have to work that muscle. Hi, Matt. That was my boss, by the way. How you doing? <laughs> that was yeah, everybody's uh, boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I swear. So you have to get over it. It's my channel. So anyway. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, so when, so for me. I'm, blushing. I'm matching the bricks behind me, Jacob. What about the bricks? You got me blushing, man. I'm like red as the bricks. <laughs> All I see is a yellow shirt, blue eyes, and receding hairline. The rest of you is just folding into the couch. Oh, wow. Thanks, man. Appreciate I that. I miss you. Oh, you were so much What fun. a guy. What a guy. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, for the, so I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, it, this is going to make sense in a second, but when you guys, when we start going through this investment journey and we're starting to, you make this investment in yourself, you don't tell people because you're embarrassed they think you're going to do it, they think you're going to fail, and then you believe them. That's the first tragedy behind becoming an investor that's your first pain and unfortunately that stops most it's not meant to be a death sentence but most people let themselves die the other dreams <laughs> die that way yep but then mm -hmm. if you're not surrounded by the right people or you're with the wrong person as a partner that can have a whole different impact on you so i was learning amazing things uh, from my education, from working with some amazing human beings, brilliant investors, Kim Christie included. Hey, honey badger, I know you're here somewhere. Um, yeah, she is. <laughs> Howdy. Uh, Great to see okay. you guys. <laughs> so that woman taught me a ton. I mean, let me tell you, honey badger, she is just, she knows, she knows what she's doing. And I was with her most, well, quite a bit when I was on the road, and she was so encouraging. So Kim, thank you. If it weren't for you, I don't think I'd be here today. Um, she was the first oh my gosh, I just love you so much. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we all got to work together. Me too. And we're still working together. We're just a different capacity. But my, what I want to Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I heard all about it. some of your conversations, my friend. Are and hello, excited? Maggio. Great to see you again, too. Hey, hey. Jacob, what's on your chin? What's, what's, what's going on with that thing? I call <laughs> it's called quarantine <laughs> hygiene. Is that just is enough? Right? to put over the mask, you know, so that, and I actually have made all my masks out of old jock straps. So they have okay. to be very fine. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Covering. Yeah. Cause you, yeah, have, you, had, you had like a, you had like a tan, right? You had like a, a, jo a jock strap tan on your chin. I got you. True. Makes Thank sense. You. Thank you. But my beard grows really quickly. So it covers and done some porcine tan lines. It's fine. Handsome, it's handsome, no matter what, man. You are so sweet, honey. Don't flirt with me. You're married. <laughs> you know, I'm my boss. I can flirt back. It never stopped me before. So. <laughs> so, but what I wanted to say for me, I did not value what I had learned in my education and how life transforming it is until I lost everything again, like you guys. So when my partner and I split up, it was devastating. Um, and, but I, there's something, when you have a hard moment, like when you guys had, there's something that will click. And this is the first time something clicked in me. And I remember that morning, I could have either stayed in bed and had a tub of Ben and Jerry's, my favorite three-way, and watched Bridget Jones' diary and felt bad about myself, or I could take action. But had I not had my education, I wouldn't have known what action to take. Well, we had our, the break happened at 8.30 in the morning. By 11 o'clock, I was having lunch with a banker. 11.30, I was talking to Kim Christie on the tel telephone. At one o'clock, I was uh, at a furnished for sale by owner, put it under contract, having no money or no idea what I was doing. By four o'clock, I had found a private money investor to give me the down payment for the property, thank God. And then at six o'clock, I was at therapy, finding out that my relationship was over. At seven o'clock, I was back home, hiding in my laundry closet, crumbled on the floor, having a panic attack with no one there to help me. I lasted for two full minutes 
because I heard that voice in my head click again. And it told me, look what you did today. You could have been a victim, but what you did was you put what you knew into practice and you actually did some shit today that's going to change who you are as a human being and your life trajectory. Two minutes later, thank you, I stood up and I moved his clothes out of my closet and into the guest room. And I haven't looked back. So when you guys are here, thank you. When you guys are here and you're having a hard time and you think that what you're learning is just about real estate, you're missing the big picture. What you invested in is a new future and a new way of being, a new way of problem solving. You are now a different person than you were when you enrolled in your training or who you thought you once were. You decided you wanted more for yourself. And you know what? It's damn time you give yourself permission to be that. Can I get an amen? I'm under amen. Give me an amen. 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 That was my fun little moment. Okay. So. I don't know what you are. And uh, no. so uh, thank you for that, everybody. So thank Bye. you for participating. So um, anyway, so Tim, what is next for you? What are you doing next in your business? Now that COVID is changing, you are a genius marketer. Your degree is in marketing. I'm hopefully that's helping you right now. What are you doing to pivot your business? Great. Well, we're just adapting like everybody else. And um, I think because of the background that we all came from, and again, I just, I, I love interacting with people. I'm not going to lie, being at home so long, Ray knows this. He's on the top right of my screen right now. It's making us a little cuckoo, right? <laughs> and so everything's pivoting, pivoting towards online, as we all know. And that's, that's how we're doing it. We're doing virtual coaching, virtual mentorships, and we we stay connected with our students as much as we possibly can, and we deliver all the content online too. And all the marketing efforts, and honestly though, before, actually, two months before COVID happened, we had a national TV campaign ready to go, and uh, that got scrapped, because again, it's gonna get all buried by the news, now everything is online, right? Mm -hmm. And so, that's basically what we're doing. However, I think we're very, very lucky because so far our business has simply been growing based on word of mouth. It's basically almost a hundred percent organic growth at the moment. That's wonderful. And um, yeah, and we're just very lucky that we have, again, we have the people that, the right people, I think, on the bus with us to continue to move forward. I keep saying the mission is the same. The mission is the same. And because everything that we went through, we just honestly, truly believe that we can make a difference. And that's all we want to do. So you have invested in three different countries, Canada, the United States, and the UK. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who are just struggling to buy their first house. You were also in Vancouver, which yeah. is one of the most expensive markets in North America. I think it's in the top three. It was number one forever. I'm not sure if it still is or not. <laughs> Where do you see real estate going now that we've had this scar put upon our entire globe? Well, I think we've all been exposed to a very, uh, we've all met a very wise man and exposed to his teachings. And he keeps saying, you know what? I don't know what kind of cell phone we're going to use 10 years from now. However, I know 10 years from now, we're all going to still need a roof over our head. And the bottom line is with everything that's happened with COVID, a lot of companies are also shifting back into, hey, maybe some departments don't have to be office-based, right? So to me, that means residential. It, um, that residential area is probably going to be seeing some growth. That's my personal prediction. And that just means that, again, people's living situation is going to be a little different. And having invested in three different countries, I mean, I, I honestly count that too sometimes because, again, the way Canadians live, don't kill me when I say this, Canadians, and the way Americans live, we're fairly similar, right? We like our land, we like our big houses as much as we can. However, having invested over in the UK, it's completely different. It feels like I was going back in time where I grew up in Asia. Everything's packed in and multiple generations share one small house or multiple people share one house. And that could happen. Who's to say that single family homes are not gonna get divided up to become people's home offices as well? Mm -hmm. Right? It's interesting so, that you're saying that. What I, uh, something that you just touched on, I. Just, it made me think this now that people are some people are having an incredibly hard time living alone during this pandemic it's going to scar people emotionally and one of my um 
one of the disruptors in the industry that I'm trying to get on here to talk to us. Uh, I, I actually agree. I think that millennials are going to be going into more of a shared housing arrangement. First of all, we've always had roommates, either there are our parents or people from college or whatever. So that's something I think is going to come down the line. I think there's going to be more fractional ownership in single family homes. I, um, I think that high density models are going to become very popular for both private as well as government funded. Um, and I, I think there are going to be some new, um, I think one of the next waves that's going to be really interesting is if you can find lending sources that will allow for fractional ownerships within one asset. So for example, if you wanted to buy in like a timeshare for a single family home, but you wanted to own just one bedroom and a percentage of the common space. So I, I, I think if lenders start looking in that, that's where the next disruption is going to be because I don't think anybody's going to want to do this again if they're single and alone and isolated in their own like filthy prison of their own making for two months, you know, <laughs> like that's going to change everybody, you know, I, I, that's one of the things I'm I seeing. Agree. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm so glad that was just my own little What do you guys think? Anybody over there who's uh, over here listening, you've got master investor Tim Sai and Ray's over here somewhere. What do you guys <laughs> think? And Kim's here. What do you guys have to think? What do you want to tell them? Um, Unmute is yourself. that a question for us or are we? Are we... It's, it's for anyone. Okay, Stephanie, San Fran has a shared home model for a bit now. Yeah, it's actually yeah. getting more popular. Uh, yeah, and but I was also going to say because I grew like I grew up in Long Island and then Miami, and now I live in New York in the city. Um, it's really interesting that um, here people are like, "How much do you pay in rent?" When I talk to my friends back home. And I have to tell them like the prices of rent for a whole apartment is a certain number, but having roommates in New York is very common and totally socially acceptable. But places like in Miami, like having a roommate is like, unless you're a college student is like unheard of. So that's like, I, I totally agree that it's going to be a shift and people are going to be much more socially accepting of it in a large, broader scale, as opposed to more dense, like highly populated places like New York, like LA, like San Francisco, where they're going to see this major shift. And if we're real, like in Florida and Miami, like, sorry, not sorry, global warming is a thing. And like land is being slowly evaporating because of the mm -hmm. rising of, of, so there's going to be less and less available homes to have. So you're going to be living with more and more people. That's just my own perspective. Oh, it's true. Actually, one of, uh, I just had a very interesting call today with, um, uh, a trans woman who I'm going to be working with, who is a sixth generation Floridian. First of all, I didn't know we had that many generations to go back here in Florida for one. But she told me that her family moved from Fort Lauderdale because their hundred year family residence had been taken over by the sea. And I'm like, well, Lord. And that's one thing about COVID that I have to be very, I'm very uh, actually grateful for is the fact that the earth is healing itself, whether or not we have anything to do with it. It, it doesn't give a damn about humans. She's like, hey, I'm mother nature. I'm gonna be fine. I had a cold. It was called humanity. <laughs> <laughs> and her vaccine was COVID or whatever, you know? So it's like, but the earth is healing itself. And if, if our properties change, it's a little terrifying. I'm just gonna go up and I'm going to start doing stuff and making Georgia with Kim Christie. It's gonna be fine, whatever. Kim, you okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm fine with that, baby. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so, for sharing uh, that picture the other day, by the way, Kim. I saw it on Facebook, and I'm like, wow. Nice. No, that was which, a very different picture? time in your life, wasn't it? When your uh, hair was the, a bit longer uh, and you had makeup on. <laughs> wow. Very, very different. <laughs> that, that was a... Um, Let's just say a pre-real estate, Kim, for certain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think she must have been a lot, she must have been a sweetheart, not. You know, although <laughs> I thought you were talking about her other pictures, all the snakes she's posting in her backyard. Have you seen those? Yes, well, I every have. Time you post, yeah, every time you post those, yeah. I'm like, hey, look, there's my next belt, you know? <laughs> Well, that one this that one this morning didn't fare so well, but that's because he had already taken a couple of my baby uh, bluebirds, so he had to well, go. I yeah. imagine so, jerk. Anyway, <laughs> so Kim, where do you see some of the future of real estate going now that we've had this pandemic? What are your What are your 
instincts telling you? Well, I think we are going to see another dip coming in the uh, single family housing market. Um, personally, um, a lot of the investors that are contacting me out of Atlanta right now um, are wanting multifamily. Um, everybody's looking to multifamily um, and mobile home parks. I'm actually helping develop a mobile home park for 55 and older community right now. A uh, pretty exciting project to be a part of. And um, I think being able to offer things in a price range that's more competitive than what people are seeing. For example, most of the retirement communities I'm finding in Georgia uh, that are within 100 miles of Atlanta which is where most people want to be for services and hospitals, such like that. Um, they're in the $250,000 and up range. And to me in Georgia, that's not really retirement price. That that's, that's Dell Webb community. They're nice, but we're going to be able to offer something in the under hundred thousand range. And I, and I'm going to be honest with you because of the baby boomers that are coming into this 55, I'm, I'm one of them. I'll be 55 this year. I think sad to say, but, um, just means I survived another year of myself. But um, I think there's going to be way more demand for 55 and older housing. And a lot of that is going to be not only subsidized, um, it's also going to almost be guaranteed for people selling properties they already own free and clear and being able to buy in cash. Mm, yeah. So that's sort of what I see and where I'm going. So I agree with you a lot, a hundred percent. For what I'm noticing in Florida, and Pamela can actually probably speak this too, a lot of the, um, we'll say the middle class retirees are doing the migration to Georgia and they're going to live in those communities because it's still a temperate climate. It's got all four seasons. They can still wear their coats in the winter and go see their grandkids in the summer. It's a very pleasant atmosphere, but they are also, um, but also the wealthy, are moving down, the upper class are moving down from New York, especially now because of COVID. So you're seeing different uh, demographics moving into Florida and out of Florida into Georgia for that reason. So I, I've actually considered getting my Georgia and my New York real estate license just to have, just, just so I can do business in both those markets. Do it, do it. Um, and, and here's why. Those quarter million dollar communities in Georgia that are retirement communities, that's cheap to people coming out of the north and out of Florida. Yep. Cheap. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. We got an awesome market here for all of it, actually. Pamela, what are you seeing? You're, you've been here. Pamela's with Century 21 here in, um, in Palm Beach <laughs> County. Uh, she might be in a closing right now. I don't remember. But Pamela, if you are available, there you are, honey. Uh, yeah, what are you, what are you, would you agree with what my observation is? Do you have your own things you'd like to add to that? I, I don't, you know, I have a very niche market within the 55. Not seeing the movement up to uh, Georgia or the Carolinas like I did back in. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. You know, I... You there, honey? Pamela's frozen. And I hate when you get frozen and your mouth is stuck in this position. <laughs> that happens. Is her a favor? Yeah, I'm yeah, to I, you know, I, got, I have some cash buyers and they just, they're here. Because what's interesting is how their children are now down here. Mm -hmm. you what know, is getting younger? Yeah. 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 Different. It is. Yeah, actually, the average age here in, um, in uh, Book Raton now is actually 44. People think it's like 90 because, well, Steinfeld. Yeah, it looks, it looks like it's 90, but it isn't. <laughs> yeah, it's actually 44. There's a lot of families here, which is crazy. It's so, like the community I live in. Everyone thinks it's 85, but that's because the younger people are out working. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Or Don't see them. Right. <laughs> So um, we have a few minutes left, and I wanted to make sure I stated that because I'm learning from a, from a very dear mentor friend of mine. So um, I want to go back and take this to Tim again. Tim, what are, you, what are some other things you'd like to share with us so to encourage everybody to reach out and build their business? What, what would you tell them to do right now? I think 
go out and share everything that you've learned right now because i think we were we're all agreeing that we could see another dip right now so what that means really to us is that it's the best time to be sharing your business concept your business plan about what you're going to be doing as soon as we all come out of this and can hit things pretty hard and raising funds is the biggest thing that we are doing right now so that you get yourself set up and well positioned to go into the acquisition mode when everybody is just still doubting where the market's going to go because we've all been trained to look at well this is the trend and this is where it's going and we should be able to make a pretty decent amount of money in the buy and that's what we should be doing and the other thing is i think the biggest lesson that we've also learned is to keep your integrity regardless especially if you're playing with other people's money and that's what ray was saying earlier when we when we declare the losses we basically had to go and tell every single investor and let them know what happened and the funny thing is the people that we thought would have our backs did not and the people that there were definitely a lot of people that surprised us because when we went to them, it wasn't just to deliver the bad news. So when we went to them, it was, okay, you know what? This is what happened. However, this is our plan moving forward. Give us a couple more years. We, still, we will still pay you back as promised with interest as promised. We just need a little bit more time at the moment. And like I said, there are some people that really surprised us because they were new. And this was their, their first couple of deals with us. And, and there were people that had been with us for five years at that point. They completely turned their backs on us. And that's totally fine. And that's what we've learned is that, you know what? Stop focusing on yourself. Focus on the others. That's what we did. Because we made sure that everybody that needed their money back was paid. And we made sure that we delivered as promised according to the new plans that we had set up for ourselves. And those people are the ones that I know and we know moving forward will be in every single project for the rest of our lives or as long as we're doing this. And money is a funny thing. It does change people. And again, you just, you just sometimes got to laugh at things and it does change people. However, I do believe that, you know what? My money is not any more important than yours and vice versa. We're out here to do honest business with each other. And that. so that's the... I think that's the one big thing that we've really learned. What um, asset classes are you uh, specializing in right now? Like where, where, cause uh, just so everybody knows yeah. the variety that is the Tim and Ray team. <laughs> the team, uh, the team and Ray team. Well, we basically, we named our business Trust Your Talent and uh, we have a, fair, a very, very full curriculum actually. There, there are nearly 30 classes that we've put out there, anywhere between business coaching all the way to real estate investing strategy. So, I mean, you know, your, your popular ones, if you will, assignment wholesale, lease options, commercial properties, uh, mobile home parks, and as well as income properties, anywhere between uh, single family homes all the way to multi-unit apartment buildings as well and uh, any sort of creative financing strategies like seller financing, rent to rent, and um, um, agreement for sales, and dealing with foreclosures, because there's gonna be a lot of those coming up. And so if that's a strategy that you, know, you want to learn how to do, I think this is a very good time to learn it because you truly can help people if you know how to help them navigate through that process, help them minimize their loss while you still get rewarded at, as well. Marlin, so those are the popular out. ones, I guess. Yeah. Hmm? Marlon was actually just posted a video on that as well on Real Talk on forbearance. I'm so proud of him. He's actually taking what we're learning and applying it. That's the whole point. Yep. So I'm proud of you, Marlon, giving you a shout out. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> anyway, guys, it's four o'clock. So as, as promised, this is the end of the actual meat of it all. But I do have a couple announcements if you want to stick around. Okay. So. Um, what I felt is important right now, uh, and this is all start, I started doing these chats as just a way to uh, get out of my own head uh, with, you know, and had it with Emily talking about stock and real estate, what's going on and the economy, and blah, blah, blah. And it's definitely turned into something more. And I think there's more that this can become. I am not going to be able to do it all on my own, which is something I learned as an investor, period. It's going to take a community. 
it's going to take our community. So I'm working on a plan right now on an idea, a concept, a collaboration, if you would, a project. And um, I'm working on it right now and I'm going to be releasing it a week from Friday. It's only going to be open to the people who have been coming to these Zoom calls because you guys are starting to trust each other and you're knowing who each other are. Now, the cool thing about everybody that's in these calls, there are so many different various levels of expertise, of, of investment experience, of life experience, of capital, of time, everything. That is this right here, everybody here, this is a billion dollar team and we don't even know it. So just try, now the investors in the room, they know it. They're like, yeah, that's fine. That's just a number. But for those of you who are only doing your first couple of deals, this is where you're going to find structure. This is where you're going to find the next steps up. So I've got a couple of things I need you guys to do so I can give you what I want to give you. First and foremost, if you are friends with anyone with that is an investor, whether they're elite education or not, but people who are interested in investing and have paid and invested in themselves, please invite them to like us on Real Talk and have them come join these conversations. Um, I, because I, this again, this is only be offered to people here, but let's get the community built. That's gonna give us more opportunities. The second thing I'm gonna have you guys do is next week, if you're actually interested in doing this little project, you are gonna be taking a personality test so I can help build specific teams based around people's specific personalities and their strengths. So you're gonna to have to be open and vulnerable and uh, we'll have to get to know each other pretty well. Fortunately, I think I know all of you pretty well. So, so far, we're good. The last thing is you have to be willing to commit to growing your business. And you have to be willing to growing it with each other, not at someone else's expense. If you're willing to do the work and you're willing to do it with people that have integrity, so you build credibility and clout, then yes you can be a part of what I'm going to invite you to do. Now, that this is not going to cost you anything to do. It's not going to be anything problematic, but it is going to make you work. And the idea here is to give you a little bit of structure. So you take the knowledge that you've already learned and you apply it in your markets, as well as working with people who are smarter than you, at least in real estate. So this is going to be a month long challenge. I'm going to give you more details as this week unfolds. That's called a hook. So you need to show up on Friday to get more information. You like how I did that? Good. <laughs> I'll see you Friday at three Eastern Standard Time. Um, does that? Are you guys excited about this? Yes. <laughs> they're, they're like, we don't know what you're talking about, but we want to. Well, a couple of you might know. Tim knows. He's involved. <laughs> so, <laughs> are, do you do you like the idea you said? I you love it. Doing? I'm so glad you guys be part of it. Thanks. Anything to get people to take action, I'm all for it. That's exactly it. You can sit and talk and talk, right? Uh huh. But until you actually do it, it's gonna be a different story. So Absolutely. I want to take this and make it grow. I'm just gonna be the conduit. I am still like you guys. I'm running my own oh. business. I'm trying to get my stuff going. And I, you guys, I'm sharing that. You guys, I talk about it all the time. If you follow me on social media, you know what I'm doing. So just stay tuned. Say what's going on. But just be ready, because the whole idea is to help us all amplify ourselves and our businesses. So that being said, does anybody have any questions before I move on? Wonderful. On Friday, uh, the, the guest I was going to have had to reschedule, so I'm going to have Javier Noho. He's going to be coming on here talking about how he pivoted his business from, becoming, from being a wholesaler to a flipper. That's how he was inducted into Hall of Fame, by the way, becoming a, um, financially free through flipping and have, being a residential investor. Now he's doing commercial and multifamily investments and what he's learned along the way to help you shorten your learning curve and get into more high return investment strategies that he's done. So that's gonna be on Friday at three o'clock here. Uh, same Zoom ID, I believe, so just take that in. Next week, I'm going to have some other excited people come in. I'm going to have two other Canadians coming on Monday and Wednesday. Kim, you don't know these women. You need to know these women. Oh, my God. They are totally up your alley. So just try. You, you're going to flip. They're, they're so, they're, oh, my God. They're so you. Straight. <laughs> they're yeah, so they're, you. They're, yeah. They just have your, you know how people tell us that we are we're a bit much? Yeah, they're the Canadian a bit much. So yeah, it's gonna be fine. Um, but they're gonna be here on Monday and Wednesday. And um, Friday, I'm going to have one more guest. And then I'm going to make the announcement to invite people to join us for this next chapter. Um, I will tell you the name of it. 
uh, I'm going to tell you the name of it on Friday. <laughs> 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 so, um, but yeah, this is going to be exciting. I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to it. So we're going to get that going. But right now, what I need all of you to do is go get all the people you know on your business cards from Elite or wherever and start adding them into the group so we can help as many people as we can. They don't know what we're doing and they're out there floundering, trying to figure this stuff out. And it's, it feels wrong that they don't know that they have support right here. And that's what we're trying to do. I'm actually gonna try to get Pip in here next week. So we'll see if that happens. There anyway, yeah, Pip, Pip Stelic, the one and only. He's a fairy godfather. <laughs> Yay, that would be great. You know, wouldn't it? Awesome. Yeah, he sent me a text earlier today. So I'm like, how did you know I'm doing this? So I'm, I'm going to see if I can get a mess. Um, guys, you are amazing. I adore all of you. Thank you for making this so worth it. I wouldn't be able to do this if it weren't for you. Uh, and um, we're just going to keep going. So be blessed. If you need anything, reach out. Let's grow together. All right? Tim, thank you, everybody. Greg, thank you, guys. I love you. Thank Trust you. your talent with Tim. Follow them on social media. If you've got questions about his real estate trainings that they do, Go ahead, reach out to him. He's here for you guys just as well. If All you right. just want to chat, reach out. Doesn't matter. I call him just to talk. I call him. That's him. what we do, literally. <laughs> like, what are you doing, boy? Let's go. Let's chat. We're all people. It's not. It's not always about business. Exactly. It's relationships, hunting. That's right. All right. Go be you. Be authentic. Be real. Love y'all. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.